This is a frame for a Heretic Hyperlite. It's about a 39 pound frame, including the motor and the VFD, the drive wheel. It has, uh, for tensioning, it has a linear actuator, which provides a rigid, or a, it provides an adjustable tensioning with, uh, once it's in place, it's rigid, so you get those benefits. It comes with a wireless remote and a holder, so if you want to put it someplace else, you can put it somewhere. Got a 2-inch travel. It will adjust on the fly. I'll show you that later in the video. So you can adjust it while the belt is running to get just the right tension of what, for what uh, operation you're performing at the time. I've been using one for about a month on my machine. Prototype on my machine that I've been using for about a month. It's the first one that I bought. It was uh, a little bit bigger than I needed at the time, and you can see that I've just scabbed it in to the way uh, my frame was set up at the time. I I wired a switch into the first unit. Had it plugged in this hole for a while. Now that I've got the wireless controller I'm going to replace with the wireless. One of the things I like about this, the gas strut, when I would, um, and I used a spring as well on my very first machine, I used a, a spring, but anyway they would oscillate as the belt tension and so this tracking arm was always working and then I, I could not never get any machines to track in reverse since I put this on um, this machine tracks in reverse perfect and I think that's the difference is having a rigid having a rigid uh, tensioner because I noticed that when I would change power settings the position of my tension arm would change when I had a gas spring or regular spring. It would move up or down, changing the geometry of the belt. And that, of course, affects your tracking. This doesn't move whether you go forwards or backwards, fast or slow. It doesn't matter. Um, the geometry of your pulleys and wheels and drives all stay in the same position. And if you want to do some slack belt, just bump it down a little bit. Bump it down. You can slack belt on it. You can tension it back up if, when you're ready to. You can tighten it up and keep going without having to stop and rework everything. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of belts. There's thin belts, there's flexible belts, there's stiff belts, there's thick belts. Um, Scotch Brite leather. I use Scotch Brite and leather here. I also use the Trizac, which are really thin and flexible. This is an 80 grit, and it's um, pretty thin. And I use some heavy 36 grits that are a lot stiffer and thicker. And this arrangement here with the tracking or with the tensioner has been able to control every belt that I put on here and bring it into tracking. I've had trouble with uh, some uh, softer belts or uh, like um, Scotch Brite belts. I've had trouble tracking those on older on other machines with the gas spring. I could, didn't have enough authority or control in them, and so they wouldn't track well. And my leather belts were always tracking off. Uh, leather belts don't track great as a rule anyway, just the nature of a leather belt, I believe. But with this arrangement, I'm able to get a leather belt to track centered on my platen, and I can move it around, I can control it. I haven't found a belt yet that I can't control with this arrangement, and I'm able to control a number of belts 
that I couldn't control on my previous machines. So that's been a big plus for me um, to be able to control every belt that I put on my machine and make it track well. Thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, you're running at 7,000. Tracking good. I'm going to go from zero, or from 7,000 to zero to 7,000 with the push of a button, and we'll see how the tracking does. Alright, now it slows down. Now it goes reverse. Tracking stayed right on good. Go back forward. Push the button. Alright, slow down. Back to 7,000. to my machine. This is in place of the gas spring or just a regular spring for tensioning purposes. And I really like it. Um, what I was trying to do was replicate something, a uh, tensioning system similar to what's on uh, like a TW90 or on the Beaumont latest uh, grinder that has a ratcheting system that goes up. And so once you get it into position, it's rigid. I was noticing that I would get vibration through my machine and that the gas spring would actually oscillate and change the tension and the geometry of the machine while it was operating at different speeds and belt pressures, uh, whatever I was loading on the belt. And so I decided I was going to give this a try. It's worked out brilliantly. I love it. <clears throat> This is what I did on the first unit, on this one. <clears throat> it allows you to adjust tension for whatever belt. I mean, all belts aren't the same. Some belts are lightweight. Some belts are very heavy. And they require, I mean, I feel like I've demonstrated to myself that they perform better under different tensions, not all the same tension, such as a 40-pound or a 60-pound spring. But if you can apply tension suited specifically to the belt and the speed you're operating that belt, I've been able to get a better performance out of it. And this is it in action. Why did you use a switch? It'll run. It'll, it'll do it. Um, you can adjust on the fly. little tension on there. <clears throat> taking a lot of the uh, vibration out of the machine which has quieted it down because you're not getting the oscillation through the tensioning arm. It goes up and it holds in place. Increase tension, and decrease tension, you get slack belt right away, tension up the belt a little bit and then go back to work, whatever you might want to do. Tracks like a train, like it's on rail. Now you detension, when I'm done, keep the pressure off. Belt's running at 7,000 feet per minute. 